I am in Oak Ridge, Tennessee at the new American Museum of Science and Energy. Uh, just in this past year, they've uh, moved, changed buildings. I think the displays are going to be less uh, vintage as they once were, but still should be pretty cool. There's a lot of history tied into the Manhattan Project. A lot of the laboratories were here in Oak Ridge, so we're going to go check this out. Now, I'm no scientist. I'm probably going to sound like a complete moron, but uh, this should be pretty neat. This museum was originally the American Museum of Atomic Energy and opened in 1949 in one of the old World War II facilities. Then they moved near this building in the 70s and they've been open here for four months. This is a display on the Manhattan Project work that happened here at Oak Ridge. The federal government took the sparsely populated area west of Knoxville and transformed it into the fifth largest city in Tennessee in just a few years. The 75,000 residents worked almost exclusively to refine enough uranium for the little boy bomb that would be dropped on Hiroshima, Japan in August of 1945. That's a replica of the X-10 graphite reactor. The museum does have a day bus tour that takes you to the reactor and other Manhattan Project sites, and I'm gonna try to do that another time. Workers use bicycles because the main K-25 building was over a mile long, and that is a phone from the K-25 building. That's a Calutron panel. The operators would monitor the meters measuring the Calutron's performance, and like all workers, they weren't told exactly what they were looking at or doing. Very little information of the purpose of the Oak Ridge Laboratories was provided to the workers and residents, so that not everyone knew everything, and they were highly encouraged to keep everything they did know to themselves. There's a pay stub and ration book, as well as a Manhattan Project shoulder patch that workers wore and examples of identification badges that everyone had to wear at all times. The atomic bombs of course are extremely controversial. The Hiroshima bomb did end up killing about 146,000 people, mainly civilians, and due to the big part Oak Ridge played in the creation of it, the museum otherwise now tries to shift focus from its World War II history to more general topics of science and energy. Here you can lift some elements in storage boxes like silver and lead. Uranium, that was used for the atomic bombs, is definitely the heaviest of the group. There's some 3D printed tooling for creating nuclear weapons, as well as an access rate control system that was made to control turnstiles at nuclear laboratories. Here's a real turnstile, possibly from one of the labs here at Oak Ridge. There's a radiological signature training device, which can contain small amounts of uranium-235 surrounded by aluminum. This is a model of a reactor core assembly with a high flux isotope reactor. It even glows. I personally find this the most interesting exhibit in the museum, an exhibit on General and 12th President Zachary Taylor. He died in office in 1850, and it was believed at the time that he died of gastroenteritis, inflammation of the stomach and intestines. But there's long been a conspiracy theory that he was actually assassinated, that he was poisoned by arsenic. In 1991, Taylor's descendants agreed to let his remains be exhumed from his tomb in Louisville, Kentucky for study, and he was taken to Oak Ridge, where his samples were tested using the high flux isotope reactor. And here are some pieces of President Taylor that were kept by Oak Ridge. That's a blackened piece of his hair. And that is one of Zachary Taylor's fingernails. These samples were placed in small polyethylene containers, and when the samples were placed in the reactor, they were bombarded with neutrons that would convert any arsenic-75 remaining in the system into radioactive arsenic-76 through neutron activation. The researchers concluded that he had very low arsenic levels, and that he had actually died of cholera. So the conspiracy was put the rest that he was poisoned. There's a neutron scattering stick and a radiocomulator, along with other instruments from the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. A lot of atomic bombs are stored here at Oak Ridge by the US government in case they're needed again, or if they need to be torn apart to build much bigger bombs. Some of these bombs were taken from the Soviet Union. Tons of supercharged uranium is also being stored here at Oak Ridge so that those atomic bombs can explode. While the museum does address a lot of what the Oak Ridge Laboratory is doing, there is a lot of conspiracy theories 
about it working on nuclear wormholes or that it's really Area 51 where aliens and extraterrestrial artifacts are stored. They do some medical research with the high flux isotope reactor. That's a fancy computer door from IBM Summit Supercomputer. That's a cutaway of a fuel assembly for a pressurized water reactor. Those are graphene cards. This was discovered in 2004, and despite the fact that it's a two-dimensional honeycomb of carbon, just one atom thick, it is a hundred times stronger than steel, and they're still working on finding a practical and cost-effective way to use it. And here's an exhibit on the nanoscale. I can't even begin to comprehend that. That's an old hazmat suit. You do still need to wear these in certain parts of Oak Ridge. You'd more likely wear one of these newer ones. While this museum is great and very high quality, it was smaller than I was expecting. I think the old location was bigger, and I'm not here in time for a show with the Van de Graaff generator. An exhibit on alternative clean energies like wind and solar. There's some sponges. There's a big plasma globe, a classic feature of a science museum. This was an air shower that was used at a nearby nanotech laboratory to decontaminate scientists. I really like this. It's a full-scale 3D printed Willys Jeep. I believe just about everything except the tires and engine was 3D printed that certainly took a long time to make, but this thing can actually drive. Not gonna lie, that's really impressive. I want one. In the back room, they have a special artifact on loan from Space Center Houston, one of the original computer control panels from the control room of Space Center Houston that was used during the Apollo 11 mission when the first men landed on the moon, now over 50 years ago. While I've seen a few of these spread around to different museums, it's always amazing to see one of the potato computers that took humans to the moon in 1969. And they also have a few robots you can play around with. I really like this museum, they've done a great job with it. Oak Ridge is a place I would like to explore more in depth, so I will be back. Please check out all my other videos, and thanks for watching.